exciting. So now. Hi, my name's Francesca and I'm reporting live for Channel 7 Māori Affairs. Right now I'm standing in front of the Beehive in Wellington, New Zealand. We're on September 14, 1972. A 300,000 signature petition was presented to Parliament by Māori people. The petition read, the courses in Māori languages and aspects of Māori culture be offered in all schools with large Māori roles as a gift to Pākehā from Māori, also as a positive effort to promote more meaningful concept of integration. I have Heka Smith here today, who is a member of the Māori Society of Victoria University. She was part of the driving force behind the petition in the 1970s. So Heda, what exactly do you think it was that led Māori to take such drastic measures of political action in an attempt to revitalise Māori language? Well, in 1970, Dr Richard Penton of the New Zealand Council for Education conducted a survey into the state of Māori language. It was the first time statistical data had been collected on this. The results were eye-opening for many Māori up and down the country. So what were the findings of Benton's report? Well, approximately half the Māori population is under 15 years old and only 15% of this age group were able to speak Māori. On the other hand, those aged 45 and over, <laughs> only 12% of the total Māori population counted for 30 percent of all Māori speakers. Wow, so would it be fair to say that these findings were hard to ignore, especially by the government in light of the Treaty of Waitangi and the guarantee of the preservation of Te Reo Māori? Most definitely, it was due to this sense of loss that a passion was installed in many Māori that led us on to taking political action to revitalise our beloved language. Thanks, Heda. So, although the statistical evidence was heartbreaking to hear and realised the decline of Te Reo Māori, it actually acted as a catalyst for change, setting a scene for unprecedented changes for the ensuing years. Some of these changes included Obviously, political action such as petitions, um, the establishment of multi language radio and television channels, the establishment of Kohanga Reo Learning Nest, and even private businesses such as Huia Publishers, who all contribute to the national movement and shared vision of stimulating and reviving Te Reo Māori. 